Hi, I'm Kave, and today we're going to talk about the structure of a thesis or dissertation. This can be a tricky topic since theses and dissertations can have different structures in different academic disciplines. But we will try to focus on what is shared across various fields, and then we will review the most common structures in a number of disciplines. Okay, let's get started with what is shared. Any research, whether in the form of a graduate paper or a thesis or dissertation, combines data and evidence with an approach or method of analysis. The data and evidence are the raw materials, the information that is collected through research and needs to be analyzed, interpreted, and explained by the researcher. And the approach refers to the method designed or utilized by the researcher to analyze, interpret, or explain the data. Among the other shared components of a thesis or dissertation is a review of the related literature on your topic. Commonly called the literature review, this section provides a summary of what has been done in your field and points toward gaps and limitations, which in turn allows you to both situate your topic within the field and justify why you chose it, constituting another important element of a thesis or dissertation called the rationale. In other words, you establish the significance of your topic by showing how your work responds to the larger scholarly conversation and addresses its shortcomings. Now, these four main ingredients can be organized in different ways in different disciplines. A review of related literature and an account of your raw data and results usually appears earlier in the thesis, either in the introduction or the chapters immediately following it. The literature review is usually the first chapter after the introduction in PhD dissertations or part of that chapter in an MA thesis. In sciences, engineering, or any discipline where there is an experiment and some data collection involved, the next chapter or chapters would outline the methodology and the experimental design that is used to obtain the results. Again, in the humanities or in an MA thesis where there is not an extensive data collection process involved, a review of the methodology and design can be included in the introduction. The next main chapter of the thesis or dissertation in sciences will present the results of the experiment in a results chapter. Once the results are presented, the next step is to discuss and analyze them using your approach, methodology, or theory. In the humanities, this is the main part of your work and will constitute the body chapters. In sciences and engineering, this is usually the penultimate chapter and is usually called discussion. All disciplines end with a concluding chapter, where the main points of the research are summarized, limitations are acknowledged, and suggestions are offered for further research. All right, I hope this short video on the structure of a thesis and dissertation is helpful for you. Remember that each field, discipline, department, and even supervisor have their own set of expectations and requirements. So make sure that you always consult resources within your field. It's a good idea to look at several recent theses and dissertations in your department, especially the ones supervised by your supervisor. There are excellent sources to help you figure out the common expectations and requirements. You can even bring a sample thesis to the CAC and ask one of our tutors to help you decipher the structure. We look forward to seeing you. Bye. To learn more tips and tricks to help improve your academic communication skills, visit the University of Victoria Center for Academic Communication website for workshops and other resources. You can also book an appointment with one of our tutors by clicking the link in the description below. Good luck and see you soon.